Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stocks All Day with Dr. O'Day. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Today I'm going to be talking about a few of the trades that I've made over the last couple weeks. I apologize for not keeping this completely up to date, but I have a lot of fun things to share as well as some stocks that I'm watching in the coming week. So I've made a fair number of trades since I last talked about where I was at. I think I left off somewhere around Humana. Um, I actually in, invested in Gap, and let me just kind of show you exactly why I chose to invest in Gap the other day. Um, so I invested in Gap on the 29th of December. That was right here. So what we we're seeing was that the we're starting to get close to this line of support. And it did look like the MACD had leveled off. It looked like it was maybe trending toward an upward trend. What I did was I set my stop loss uh, about, so the way again that I'm calculating my stop loss is I'm using the ATR and then I'm subtracting that from my line of support. So I, I subtracted about a dollar off of this line of support. So from 1979 down to about 1893 here was where I set my stop loss. Unfortunately, what happened on that trade was that I did stop out on 1.4, and 1.4 was a rough day. Um, it was a rough trading day, I think, for everyone. It was kind of the start to the new year, and what was happening was there was a fair amount of news. The stock markets were, were kind of taking a hit. And I'll remind you that, you know, earlier in December, I had posted a video talking about how I, I'm expecting a fairly significant um, stock market crash here coming up. I still expect that. Um, to be honest, I've, I've been playing too much in my main portfolio. I, I you know, based on what I had seen in about mid-December, I went ahead and sold my VTI, that's Vanguard Total Stock Market Index, and my VO, which is a mid-cap ETF. That's what makes up my main portfolio of stocks. I had sold those. I ended up buying back in. I, I thought that I had made the wrong decision, at least in the short term, so I bought back in, and I I just made a couple stupid trades there on my main portfolio, and what I should have done is I should have just trusted my strategy. I talked a little bit ago about my, my long-term strategy, and that's kind of the takeaway from this video is to trust your strategies. I have made a couple stupid trades here in early January. I lost a few percentage points on my trading, and it was because I didn't follow my strategy. I didn't let the strategy play itself out. So Gap, I lost a decent chunk of cash. Um, luckily, I didn't have too much invested in Gap. I was fairly diversified at the time. I had about $700 in there, and I lost about 5% on one of those trades and, and about 4% on the other trade of Gap. So I did take a little bit of a hit there. Um, I dipped back below f being 50% up at that time point. I had also invested in Jumia. Jumia is an interesting stock. It's very fluctuating. If you followed along to this point, what we've kind of seen is actually a while back, I, I almost bought in right, right near this dip down to 24. I didn't have the guts to buy in at that time. I really wish that I would have. Um, I had predicted that almost perfectly that it would drop drop back to around 24 and it did. I had a limit buy um, on that. You know, I, I was ready to buy and unfortunately I, I didn't, I, I canceled the limit buy. I ended up buying in somewhere around 29, maybe 30 bucks. And I did make a fairly substantial percentage on that in this range here. But what happens here is, is Jumia is a stock that is tending to fluctuate between $30 and $50. And so I bought in right here thinking that it would go back up to $50 and it would rebound off the support. I kind of ignored the MACD that was still fairly strongly negative at that time. And what ended up happening was I lost a few percent on that trade as well. I ended up stopping out on that trade. Um, on the fourth as well, so that was unfortunate there. So I lost 12% on that trade, which was almost $60. And I also decided because I had stopped out on those two, I decided to cut my losses on that day. 
I, and to be honest, I, I a little bit panic sold here. Um, I wasn't losing a substantial percentage on any of these trades. I mean, yes, I lost 12% of my investment in Jumia. I didn't have a ton of money invested in Jumia, though. I had 500 bucks, so that's a fairly small percentage of my main portfolio. I was fairly well diversified at the time, and I should have been happy there. Um, I was also at the time invested in JD and Nysource and again I panic sold I just sold out of everything on that day I thought that the market collapse that I was predicting was going to happen unfortunately if you look at a lot of those stocks that I sold on that day they've since gone up um, and I wouldn't have stopped out on those and I could have made some money on them so unfortunately like I said the big takeaway here at least with those trades right there is I need to trust the strategy. I set my stop losses for a reason and if they stop out that's fine. And some stocks are going to stop out and I need to become more comfortable with that. And what I realized, you know, in watching this is that yes, there was a bad day, but things tended to rebound around my support levels. Things even though we had a few bad days there, I need to trust this strategy and there's a reason that I picked this strategy and I need to let it work if things stop out that's fine I'm gonna have some bad trades um, and I need to let it happen so that's a big takeaway here one of the worst things that happened during this time point was Wayfair so what happened with Wayfair I'm going to go ahead and pull that up so let me just type in W here so Wayfair I had um, an amazing prediction on this. So, so right around here, I said, "All right, so my I'm going to buy into Wayfair," and I did at $235 a share. I got a great price on it when it had dropped down to here. What happened here um, was last Wednesday I went in for to have my wisdom teeth taken out. I didn't know how I was going to feel after that, and so. That was last Wednesday. Let me check the date on that when I went in, or not last Wednesday, but it was the 6th. Um, so Wednesday the 6th was, right. I'm just going to move that out of our way here. Wednesday the 6th was when I went in to have my wisdom teeth taken out, and I had bought in at 235. And it had gone up. After I bought in, it had gone up a few percentage points. So what I did was I tightened up my stop loss. I was kind of stupid. I should have just left my stop loss in place. But I didn't know how I was going to feel coming out of my wisdom teeth. I didn't know if I was going to be, you know, hopped up on meds or anything like that. So what I ended up doing was I set my stop loss at exactly what I paid for the stock. What ended up happening that day is something that's still hard for me to wrap my head around right at the opening of the six so right at stock market opening what ended up happening was someone sold a lot of shares someone sold a lot of shares and that ate up a lot of people's stop losses so what ended up happening is immediately at day open someone sold so many shares that it stopped a ton of people out. It literally stopped everyone out that was in front of me and the price dropped substantially right at market open so much so that it stopped me out and actually sold my shares for a dollar less than my stop price um, a share which isn't that big of a percentage. I like I said I didn't lose very much money on this. I you know if we look back I lost a total of three dollars and eighty five cents so I didn't lose very much here but the issue was was that right after this massive sell-off literally within minutes the price was right back up to where it was and so there's this really really strange event that happened that day um, and actually it's it's part of why I'm not investing with Robin Hood anymore so Robin Hood is currently being sued um, for like potentially selling because they don't you know it's it's kind of unclear where Robin Hood makes their money and kind of the issue with Robin Hood right now and I'm not affiliated with Robin Hood at all that's why I'm leaving the, the platform what they've kind of been accused of is potentially selling their trades you know and, and getting people much lower um, 
much lower payoff for the trades than they should be getting. And I'm wondering if I was a little bit of a victim in that. And if you actually look, so uh, I contacted Robinhood and what the, the, the support person sent me a screenshot of every trade that had happened at that time point. And if we look here, so on a given day, Robinhood has a volume of 1.89 million shares a day being sold. If you look, my trade that sold for, like literally my one single trade that sold for 234 a share, those five shares were the lowest trade on that entire day by over a dollar. And I'm a little unhappy with that. I don't under I don't fully understand exactly how that happened. Again, slippage is a real thing, but I don't get how my five measly shares were literally by out of 1.9 million shares that were sold that day. I don't fully understand how mine were sold at, at a dollar less than everyone else's. Um, that doesn't compute for me, and that's why I'm not going to be using Robinhood in the future. Again, I understand that slippage happens. I understand that people get stopped out. I understand that I made a mistake and tightened up my stop loss too much. I should not have done that. However, I don't like the way that things played out. Unfortunately, let's look at what's happened since. So since that time point, this stock has shot up and I could have potentially sold it for over $360 a share, meaning that I could have made over $600 on this. And that's unfortunate. I never bought back in because at the time it had immediately skyrocketed to over $240 a share. And I wasn't going to pay $8 more a share. I mean, it was already creeping closer to this point of potential resistance that I had identified right there. And so, unfortunately, I really missed out on, on that Wayfair stock. I didn't lose very much, but I could have had a really good benefit there. I did buy back into Gap for just a little bit. I bought 40 shares. Um, I did make a little bit of money on that, so I purchased them at 2121, sold at 2160. I thought that this was probably still going to go up, but I thought a couple other things. I ended up investing in Ethereum and Bitcoin, and so I took the money out of out of that. Um, I invested in a couple other things to. So I, I I thought other things were going to go up faster than Gap. So Ethereum and Bitcoin again. I don't like investing in this stuff, but I did invest in it. I made a, a, a moderate chunk of cash. Unfortunately, I got a little bit hyped up on Bitcoin at the time. I threw another extra little bit, and I did it right right at the worst time. I bought in at 39000 and it was right when Bitcoin was dropping. So if you've been following crypto, it did take a little bit of a hit in the last week. And so I did lose a little bit there. I was trying to just make a, a, a small amount of cash, like a decent amount of cash pretty quickly there. I did make a little bit. I didn't make very much, though. I took a little bit too much risk, not enough reward there. Verizon I also invested in on the 7th, and I ended up selling. It just was petering around. It wasn't doing anything. Um, and I'm glad I sold that. Um, I didn't like what had happened. So if we look at Verizon, let me go ahead and pull that up. VZ. So I had invested in this on the 7th. Oh, that's still Wayfair. So I had invested in Verizon on the 7th, and I saw it creeping downward. I thought that it was going to get more support at this line than it actually did. Unfortunately, it didn't, and I'd seen that the MACD started to trail back off, and that was why I decided to sell. I sold before it stopped out. That ended up being a good decision. But again, I probably should have let my stop loss do its work. Um, I also bought into Activision. So Activision, I paid $89.67 a share. Let me just walk you through kind of why I purchased that at that time. ATVI. So Activision, this is a stock that I've, I've watched um, for a little bit now. So I ended up purchasing Activision on 1.7 for $89.67 a share. 
So one seven, let's go right to there. And so what we saw was that we rebounded right off of this line of support. We had seen a previous swing high right at that level of support. We ended up breaking through that and then came back down. So I thought that we would be rebounding off of that. And we did rebound off of that a little bit. I made a little bit of, little bit of money, but I ended up selling before um, anything too big happened. You know, I'd still be up. I'd still be in that trade. But what I ended up doing was I invested in CGEN and Best Buy. So CGEN was a stock that I had had previous luck with. In my mind, when I watch this stock, it's highly predictable. So last time I had bought in around here, I made a decent amount of cash pretty fast. And then, you know, you see it drop off, you see it go back up. Or actually, sorry, I bought in about here and then made a decent amount of cash there. So what I saw with CGEN was we had approached this level of support. And then we had a great rebound off of that level of support right there. We saw that the MACD line had gone down and then kind of tapered off. And so here on the, let me see, when did I buy that? On the 7th was when I purchased CGEN. That was right here when it was having its rebound. And I purchased, and if we look here, I mean, there's a potential level of resistance right about here. I should actually draw that in. And what I'm looking at right now is kind of what happens tomorrow. Because CGEN had a great, you know, breakthrough of that resistance level. It could taper off. We could see that this resistance ends up because of this last little point here where we did have a pretty strong rebound. We could have a rebound off of that. But based on the MACD, it actually looks like we're probably going to have a decent upswing. And I'm expecting to make a decent chunk of cash on that going all the way up to 200. I expect to make about 15% on that trade. I'm currently in it. Um, I'm excited about that one. I think I made a good call on that, so I'm expecting a decent payoff on that. I also invested in Best Buy, so what we saw here was that we were seeing a trend upward on the MACD. To be honest, maybe this wasn't the best trade in the world, um, but what I had identified was that you know I saw that you know we had rebounded off of the 200-day exponential moving average, this level of support way down here. We had a level of resistance here from you know kind of previous trades. We ended up breaking through that, and so what I did was when I saw that we have broken through that level of resistance, once you break through resistance, it becomes support. So I took a little bit of a risk here, and I bought in right about here, and I said, okay, I'm going to set my stop loss a little bit below that based on my ATR. So what I did again was I took my support level and then subtracted off the ATR on that date. And so I have my stop loss set somewhere around 755. I'm looking for a target profit around um, you know 123 ish and that gave me a ratio of, of let's see here 1.51 again I'm looking for ratios at least 1.5 to 1 and so that did meet my criteria this was probably a little bit more of a risky trade but again I'm not risking all that much here I have my uh, the largest portion of my portfolio is in CGEN I'm expecting a great return on that I do have uh, you know about a thousand bucks right now into Best Buy and hopefully we see that upswing and not a continued downswing. So that's what I'm in right now. That's kind of an update on the stocks that I have invested and where I'm kind of looking at right now. I do have a couple other stocks that I'm kind of following. I'm always following Jumia because of the strong swings. I try to catch that at the right time. Apple is actually on a downtrend right now. It's actually a decent time to buy Apple currently if you're trying to preemptively see support at this level right here. If we were to buy in at what it closed at um, on Friday, then we would have actually a 2.43 risk or reward to risk ratio. But for me, I'm not quite ready to buy in. We see that the MACD is still on a fairly negative trend. If anything, it's speeding up. We can take this down to the four hour window and kind of see that potentially it's starting to level off in that four hour. But for me, it's still going down. And I want to see kind of a little bit of a rebound off of that level of support. I'm also watching Domino's Pizza fairly close. I used to work at Domino's. I was a manager there for about five years. Just a little, 
a little fun fact there, but it does look like, and I don't like trades that are trading below the 200-day exponential moving average. That means it's on a on a downtrend, and I like to invest in things that are gaining. But it does look like we're still around slash above that, and it does look like we're finding a little bit of support off of this level, so I'm interested in what happens on Monday with that. Um, DT Energy, so actually right now a lot of the energy companies are starting to show um, little uptrends. We saw that we just hit um, a MACD crossover here and it looks like we actually just broke through this level of support. I was thinking depending on what it opens at of potentially doing a little something like this where you know we could potentially buy in here. We could set our stop loss at 122 minus 250 so around 1950 119 45 there and then set our target profit around here you'd have a pretty good reward to risk ratio if you were hoping that this then acted as a line of support and this continued its uptrend I kind of expect that to happen based on what I'm seeing in the other energy areas um, but that one is a little bit more of a risky trade um, this this stock is just odd to me. It seems like it has been on a downtrend, but it looks to me like it might be breaking the downtrend right here. And so this is Gilead Sciences. Um, there's a lot of actually pretty positive news coming out about them right now. Um, so this is a potential buy as well, right around this line of support. You could do kind of a, a similar thing where you set your set your target buy in here. You look at the ATR, so about a dollar twenty-seven off of sixty-two sixty-five, so about sixty-one forty is where we're going to set that. So it's a fairly tight stop loss, um, and then a target profit up here around this. Now, is that going to hit the the target profit? We don't really know, but it's a pretty low risk. Um, it's a pretty small trade. You're not risking that much. You aren't gaining very much, but you could potentially throw a little bit of money into there. Um, so those are the stocks that I'm watching most closely right now. I've got a whole host of stocks. Actually, this looks like it's going to shape up to be a fairly good week. Um, in my orange list, I've got a lot of stocks. I've got a lot of watchers in my red list. So we might have a potentially fun week here coming up. So with that, that's the stocks that I'm invested in currently and why I'm doing that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Please let me know if there's any content that you'd like to see coming up or if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.